Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. It's great to have you here. We are so glad that you are with us tonight. Yes. We've got an exciting uh, talk to share with you, a story to share with you that I think will answer a lot of questions in people's lives. Yes. I think we've got a really good story this is, here. Yeah, this will be really good. Hopefully it can bring some clarity to you, encourage you a little bit. And, uh, you know, because we all go through difficult times. Yes. We all experience difficult things. And sometimes if we don't have the right knowledge about maybe why something's happening and we start putting it as if God is doing something bad to us mm -hmm. and that can really hurt our relationship with him. Yes. So I think today's going to be really helpful for us to dive in and look at Elijah's life again. Yes, yeah, so last week we started in looking at Elijah and in por portions of his life. We're not doing his whole life. We're not going through every part of it that the Bible talks about. But what we are doing is we're looking at several of his miracles yeah. and then we are taking those miracles and see how do they apply to us today yeah. or the story around the miracle and today we're going to be talking about why do bad things happen to good people yeah. or to even bad people why do bad things why happen bad things happen yeah, yeah why do they take place but there we've got a story here that we right where we left off last week so just to remind you where we were last week last week Elijah was set, sent to a widow woman she has a son and she only had a little bit of flour left and a little bit of oil left in her house. And she was gathering sticks to make this last cake for her son and, him, and her to eat. And then they knew that they had no more food and they'd eventually starve. Well, Elijah shows up being sent by God and tells her to make the cake for him first. Yep. Make him a small one and make sure that there's stuff left over for the two of them. And she did it, and but then the flour didn't stop, the oil didn't stop, and it's keep on going, and it's been going, it's been going now for a couple of years. She's been, uh, she's been supplied yeah. supernaturally by God. Now this is pretty amazing because here she's every day, every day that she pours the oil, it's still exactly the same. Every day she scoops out flour, it's still exactly the same. Wow. Now what I thought was very interesting in this is God did not fill the flour jar all the way up to the top. It was still like yeah, fill there. up a, a, a cupboard filled with oil and stuff that's like a five-year supply or something. Exactly. You know? No, it was day by day. Yes, day by day. Just like the manna. Just like the manna. You know, so when he providing for the people of Israel in the yeah. wilderness, they had enough for that day. Yes. And God is trying to communicate to us, He will take care of every day. He's already ready for it. I mean, Jesus talked about it all the time when he taught, you know, the Lord's Prayer. He said, you know, give us this day our daily bread. So, yes. You know, the foundation there that Jesus is teaching us about being relational with the Father who knows what we have need of, who knows our tomorrow, who knows what we're going to need about, knows what we're going to need in a week from now, a month from now. Yet Jesus is telling us, no, 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 don't worry about tomorrow. You know, for the grace that we have and the provision we have is for today. Yes. You know, and it, it that's relational too. You know, it's so Absolutely. relational. Absolutely. Yeah, because God wants us to talk to him every day. Yeah, and depend on him. Like, yeah. God, I need you today. Yeah. <laughs> I need you right now. You right. Know? And I, I think that's something we have to ask each other is uh, how often do you talk to God daily? Are you talking to him daily? Because if you are, high five to you, way to go, yeah. because you should be. But there are a lot of Christians who they talk to God on only when they are like on a Wednesday night Bible study or a Sunday morning church. Yeah. Yeah. And the rest of the week, I'm just so busy. I didn't have any time for yeah. God. Right. How can you be so busy you won't have time for the person who's right. providing you with your daily needs? Yeah. But we're going to go to the story. We find this story in 1 Kings chapter 17. So we're picking up where we left off uh, last week. And it says in verse 17, Now it happened after these things, and after these things are referring to the woman being provided for every single day with oil and flour. The woman's not going hungry. No, she's not eating steak, okay? She's, yeah. she's not eating a, a, a fresh chicken. Right. She doesn't have a goat, right. but she is alive. Yes. And God is providing for her yeah. with the oil and the flour. And like some people say, well, gee, I, you know, I, I want to go to a steakhouse. <laughs> I'm done with this mamma, <laughs> man yeah, and right. stuff. Yeah. And what you need to understand is God's got a plan for your future and a plan for today and let him do his daily work for you. Mm -hmm. But now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick. So her son gets some kind of disease and his sickness is so serious that there was no breath left in him. 
So this was terminal. Right. He got sick with something that we don't know what it was, but his, his life ended. And then look at verse 18. This is an interesting reaction. It says, so she said to Elijah, what have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? Mm. That mm. verse says a whole lot. Yep. It says an awful lot. You know, and what, what it's communicating here is she jumped immediately back to her old ways. Like, God, why did you let this happen? Right. Why did you do this? And we want to talk to you about why do bad things happen to people? Why do bad things happen to good people? This woman is in the middle of God's will. She's doing what she's supposed to do. But yet her son dies in the middle of God's will. Yeah. And what she did, her first reaction was she got mad at the prophet yeah. or the pastor right. or the preacher or the guy communicating the will of God, got yeah. mad at him, mm -hmm. and then she's mad at God. Yeah. Not thinking, you were a few years ago about to make your last cake and then go die. With your son. Yes. Yeah, that was it. And your son was, was your going to son. die. Yeah. And now that he has died, yeah. You're mad that God let him die. Yeah. And this yeah. is what it comes down to. Yeah. And so we want to talk to you about uh, why do bad things happen? And, uh, and I, I have this question. I wrote in my notes this question. Did God let this happen to the boy or did God send Elijah because he knew it was going to happen? That's good. So that's something to think about. That's really good. A lot of times we don't, we don't get into the mind of God. We right. just get into our emotions yeah. and our feelings because... What if God already knew your son's going to die and right. I need to help him right. and I need my man there at that moment? Yeah. And that's why she was selected. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. But you've got another story that deals with this. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to pause from Elijah and jump over. Yeah. In Ruth chapter one, you know, what we find here is this woman is in a way uh, blaming the man of God and blaming, blaming God. And when we read certain scriptures in the word and different people saying things, it's true that they're speaking but sometimes what certain characters in the Bible, what is recorded of them saying is not necessarily a statement of truth, right? Because it is not that Elijah came to bring her sin to remembrance or to kill the son. Yet it is true that she is saying such a thing. And so a lot of times when we read this, you can't build doctrine based off of what this woman is saying. Um, you know, and for another example in reference to this would be in Ruth chapter one, you see that there's a woman named Naomi. She's the mother-in-law uh, of Ruth. And what happened was in the land of Israel, which was the, their promised land, it's the, the land that God prepared for them. It was a land God called them to. In other words, when we obey God, do not step, don't go do something else until God tells you to do something else. You know, and that's that patience and perseverance of sticking through with something yeah. that God told you to do or God sends you somewhere and it's like not working out. Yeah, you, you brought something out I think is really important, the word patience. Yes, right. That, and the Bible says, let patience have her perfect work. Yeah. And you, you won't want anything. You right. will get what it is you need. Yes. And we a lot of times forget the power yeah. of patience and the spiritual weapon of patience. It, it, it matures us. It, it, yes. And, and it's so true, like... When God does call us somewhere, let me just inform all of you right now, it's going to require some patience. Yeah. Because if we, if we disobeyed God and it was like, oh, everything's here, you know, there, God's more interested in our spiritual development and in our character formation and who we are as people and, and being steadfast, staying in love, abounding in forgiveness, and these different things, no matter what comes our way. God is very interested and very invested in that. I mean, we see in Philippians 1, 6 that God has destined us and, and he has promised to never quit having Christ formed within us, mm -hmm. that what God has begun in us, he will bring to completion. Mm -hmm. So anyways, we have Ruth here and Naomi and the, where they are in, in Israel, there's a famine happening. And so when, what happens when the going gets tough is, well, let's go live somewhere else. And, 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 and this, isn't a, uh, this is not a jab at anybody and where they live in America, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, I'm a missionary at heart. Like when mm -hmm. I got started in ministry, I was a missionary going overseas and, and stuff. And so when I look in America right now, I see all these Christians leaving California. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, no, 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 no. Christians need to be moving to California. This is the mission field. Like yeah. California is so, uh, it's so bad. Like it's, it's, 
it's literally run by never mind you know we don't have to get the play yeah. but it, 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 if there is a mission field in america it is new york city and it is california and you know portland or <laughs> and maybe yeah. some others but man this is the place where we ought to be moving to to do missions work and stuff and and we're on the mission field but I, I, i'm gonna yeah go, go on ahead yeah because i'm right there with you we we've seen lots of people right. leave california and some of them very good friends yeah. and some for different reasons. Right. Some left for one reason only or two reasons. One, the politics in California and two, the cost right. that it, yeah. it takes to live here right. and the taxes that are yeah. here. But I have to ask this question. Yeah. Are you done with God's assignment in California? Did, Calif did God tell you? Now, I know some people who prayed through it. Yeah. And they did. They right. they believe they heard God. Mm -hmm. I know some other people who you know, not just in our church, but in right. other churches. Yeah, and in the community, the neighborhood. It's happening stuff. statewide. It's yes. not just yeah. like localized yeah. here. We're, we're talking about a couple yeah. million people. It, yeah, have fled. Yeah, yeah. But um, but it, for believers, part of our geographic location has to do with our assignment from Absolutely. heaven. Absolutely. Yeah. And is your assignment done? Mm -hmm. Well, someone says, "Well, I can't stay here. I can't live here. I can't afford this." Or are we supposed to adjust something? Right. You know, does that mean move into something else that's smaller? Does that or is all I'm saying is, if God wants you in California and you left, are you leaving some of the blessing that He has for your life? Absolutely. You know, there's yeah. an old story, and that's when I first got into ministry many years ago. I heard this story. It's, I don't even know if it's true. I yeah. think it's just a story. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, this particular person, a minister, was praying and believing God for his assignment and felt God said, I want you to go to Africa. And so he sold everything he had, he sold his house, moved his family to Africa, went to Africa, <laughs> um, took everything there, uh, bailed the United States, went to Africa, found a place in Africa, set up shop in Africa, and it said, and for the first two weeks, he had signs, wonders, and power of God flowing like crazy, people getting saved, right. miracles happening. And then after two weeks, it, it died down mm -hmm. and then died down. Yeah. And after more than a year, he's praying, God, what's happening? What, yeah. you know, when I got here? And then God says, um, go to Africa and after two weeks, come back. And it was like, <laughs> so you weren't done listening. You weren't done listening. You know, and it was yeah. a matter of, are you in the will of God? Are you in the right place? And again, I think it's just a, a preacher yeah. story, but it makes the point. Yes. Are you physically in the location that God wants you to be? Yeah. And that includes the church that you're attending. Absolutely. You know, and, and the whole point, it just comes down to one simple thing, is we're called to follow Jesus. Yes. That's it. Like, yeah. it's that simple. And, and Naomi here is making a decision yes. on her life, not based on, the, on what God's doing, based, but, but based on the circumstances. You know, and, and that's just, it's sad that, well, you know, we, we have to be above that. We're Christians. Yeah who have a different king, right? So we're not going to make life decisions because the going gets tough. And, and that might be hard on some people here, but we, we got to speak the truth. You yeah. know, you have to, it has to be said or it won't ever be said, is that we're above the circumstances are tough or not, you know? And, and we can read the book of Acts and we discover the, the situations and the circumstances were very difficult, yet they were going headlong into those circumstances mm -hmm. because we serve a different king. You know, we mm -hmm. serve a different kingdom and, and we're like firefighters that run into the fire, police officers that run into the danger. You know, mm -hmm. that's what we are. And so that's why patience is so important because that develops that character of I'm not going to run when it gets tough. Because I know you personally, you have had a lot of very difficult things. When I hear, I'm like, my gosh. You know, but you persevered through by the power of God and by the grace of God. You persevered through. And now you have this character and this integrity and this, this steadfastness that has been built up, which God is what he values more than anything else, right? Like, here's Tom, like a man who's... who who didn't run when it got tough, you mm -hmm. know? And that's so beautiful. And you preached on it this past Sunday at church about, you know, living for heaven and, and experiencing the rewards. And that's really what is going to be rewarded. You know, you were faithful in a little, mm -hmm. now be faithful over much. Yes. It's not you had a giant business, you were a super success on earth, now be a success here. That's not what he says. He says you were faithful. 
yeah. you were committed yes. to what I was leading you to do. Yeah, the word faithful is, it, it, that's what God's looking for. Yeah. More than anything else is faithful. Yeah. And think of the word faithful. We know what it means, that someone is going to stick to it, someone's right. going to be true to it, yeah. someone's going to uh, have integrity in it. Right. And it, But it, the word breaks down to being full of, of faith. faith. Absolutely. Yeah. Faith, yeah, full. exactly. So let's go to Nairobi yeah. and, and, yeah, sorry. and tell her story so, because I think her story is incredible. And yeah, so for Ni this lesson, exactly. So they're they're in they're in Israel. There's a famine, so they leave the will of God. They leave the place where God brought them, and they go into the land of Moab, which mm -hmm. is not where they're supposed to be. And now all of a sudden, Naomi's husband dies, mm -hmm. her sons die, mm -hmm. and all she's left with is her, no money, nothing, and her two daughters, uh, mm -hmm. two daughter-in-laws, right? And so then they decide to go back to Israel. Now, when they go back to Israel, she brings with her nothing other than her two daughters-in-law. Mm -hmm. And what she says here in Ruth chapter 1, verse 20, she says she's talking to maybe kinsmen, people that she left in Israel. She, she's back, you know, family reunion time, talking to different people. And she said, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full. Remember, God didn't tell her to go out. Mm -hmm. She was full. But she left and her family. And, the, and she says, the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi? Since the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me. Now, she is saying this. She could be very emotional, mm -hmm. very bitter, and probably mm -hmm. is. I'm, you mm -hmm. lose your husband and your sons. That's a tough part. Mm -hmm. But she's putting the blame on God when nowhere in Scripture is it God that did this. Right. It was their own decisions that they left God and went to do, you know, we're going to go over here and do this. So just because she is saying that it's the Almighty who dealt bitterly with her, and with her family doesn't mean that's accurate. And what we discover as we continue reading the book of Ruth is God was doing the exact opposite. He was bringing Ruth and Naomi back to the land to bless them so abundantly mm -hmm. where she is the lineage of the Savior Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what the enemy meant for evil, God turned around for good. Yes. And, and but we cannot place the blame and get so bitter towards what God. What we're saying is the issue that happened to Naomi is that she made a decision mm -hmm. that wasn't based off of the will of God. Right. And it moved her out of the will of God, yeah. and she suffered for it. They did, yeah. And now she is true. It's an act of repentance. I'm going back to where I was supposed yes. to be. Yes. And she goes back, and she's right back into the blessings of God and the favor of God. Yeah. But, you know, we find this throughout the whole Bible. We do. And, you know, you take the, the children of Israel, because yeah. we call them, they were adults, but they were children of Israel, yeah. you know, the descendants of Israel. Right. And they are in the wilderness under the leadership of Moses. And right. Moses has done all these miracles mm. through, you know, God has done these miracles through the hand of Moses. Right. And um, what's taking place is the, God says, this land is for you. So the 12 spies go in, the 12 spies come out, yeah. and 10 spies say, no, circumstantially, we can't do this. Right. What we see and what we smell, what we taste, what we touch, this can't be done. Right. And two said, no, it can be. Right. Well, we know the story. The 10 end up dying in the wilderness, and the two end up going into the... Yep. But they were not in the will of God. Right. A lot of times we are afraid to do the will of God by circumstances. Yes. You know, we look at the situation and we look, we're moved by what we see mm -hmm. and not by what we know right. or believe. Yeah. And Nairobi paid a huge price yeah. for being out of the presence of God, yeah. uh, out of the place of God, right. which put her out of the will of God. Yeah. Now, what's interesting, let's go back to 1 Kings. Yeah. Back over to 1 Kings chapter 17, this widow woman is not like Nairobi. No. We have no indication that she has made a wrong choice. Right. We have no indication that she's out of the will of God. So she's in the middle of the will of God and a bad thing happens to her. Her son dies. Yeah, right. But she's in the middle of the will of God. Yeah. Now, what the story tells us is in the middle of the will of God, when a bad thing happens, God's there to rescue you. Yes. Yes. And again, I have to ask, did God know way ahead of time, mm. your son's going to die and I'm going to help him. Yeah, right. And we're going, I'm sending my man, my right. prophet to you. Yeah. You take care of him because when you need him, he'll come, That's you know, good point. he'll step up to yeah, the game. Right. So I think what we have to help everyone understand, 
just because you're doing the will of God and you are in the middle of the will of God and you're living for God yeah. doesn't mean you're, you're not going to face difficult times right. in life. Yep. You are going to face difficult times in life because you are not a citizen of this world. You are a citizen of heaven, yeah. an ambassador in this world in Christ. And there's opposition to that, 100%. Yes. Yeah, and Jesus said, if they persecute me, they'll persecute you. Yeah. And the persecution is reference to the spiritual persecution and the trouble that will come. Yeah. And because of the sin that's in this world and yeah. choices that other people make right. affect you. Yeah, we're, you know, I think a lot of people forget that sometimes uh, based on certain doctrines, there's all kinds of crazy stuff that we won't have time to get into all of the deterministic views and, and predestination and all those different things. But one of the things of, of, of uh, it's called determinism, where everything that happens was ordained by God. So nothing happens outside of God's will. And that's a, like a Calvinist teaching and different things. And the problem with all of those teachings is they elevate God's sovereignty to a place of full power, whereas we elevate God's sovereignty to his character. In other words, we say that God cannot just do anything he wants. Why? Because God cannot act outside of his character. Mm -hmm. Say, so the, the Calvinist and the determinist says, yes, he can. We say, no, he can't, because the Bible clearly states that God cannot lie. And so God cannot just go outside of his character and give these kinds of evil situations because that would be outside of his character. But we live in, if you will, on this earth, like a drama where there are several actors and different characters moving about. We've got the enemy, the accuser, the Satan who goes around like a roaring lion. You have people that have free will that decide to sin with their free will. And so you have all these different situations occurring and God is not the puppet master pulling the strings between everybody. Right. And that's the thing we have to understand is that there is there's this big drama unfolding with many characters, but God has promised promised us that he will never leave us nor forsake us and we can depend on him for provision for protection for health for security and that he is not somewhere far off but somewhere very close working in our lives yes and just like this woman where something happened and what you know what's so cool about this is that both her and elijah they end up at this place where there's about to be a supernatural miracle occurring that's unprecedented, never been done before. But the only reason they are both there is because they both obeyed God back here. Yes. And one obedient, once obe obedience, 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 step by step obedience brought them to this place of an that's unprecedented good. miracle. Yes, yeah, really and good. And we want to operate in miracles, right? We, we always want to yes. be used by God. At, at least if you're a Christian, you know, it's inside of you. It, that, you know, purpose to do something. But it's as simple as this. Obey God in the small things. Mm -hmm. Obey God step by step. And as you obey God, you will be brought to these places yes. where God does something extraordinary. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's really good. And so let's go back to chapter 17. Uh, again, verse 18. So she said to Elijah, what have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? So she's making the assumption because of sin in her life, it has resulted in her son dying. Where there is no, that's a true statement that she made. Right. She truly said that. It's recorded that she said that, but it doesn't make it a, a true biblical doctrine. Right. That right. your sin isn't resulting in your children dying. Right. And so let, let's go to verse 19. And he said to her, give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his own bed. So he's got the dead body of her son, carries it upstairs, puts it on his bed. And verse 20, then he cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodge by killing her son? Mm. Again, this is Elijah. Now, what right. you need to understand is God has unveiled himself. It's more like uh, the peeling of, you know, you could say an onion yeah. where you take one la layer off yeah. and then another layer off, another layer off, another layer off. And God has done that with himself to mankind. Mm -hmm. Started with Adam and Eve yeah. and, and revealed himself as the provider. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and then he continues to reveal, 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 and the ultimate revealing of God is the death of Jesus Christ on the cross right. and the resurrection of yeah. Jesus Christ. Now we see God in his, all his glory. Yeah. And what I'm saying is Elijah doesn't know as much about the character of God mm. as the average Christian today so because the average Christian today has a lot more resources available. Yes. Elijah had no Bible to turn to. Right, right. He only has yeah. traditions right. and stories that have been told right. to him by his previous generations. Yeah. We have a Bible that we can go to and we can find out so much about God. Amazing. In fact, when you go to the the Gospels, Jesus makes this statement. He goes, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Wow. You know, and that, so we could study the, now Elijah couldn't read the Gospels right. to find out about the Father, right. but we can. Yeah. We can really, really find out about the Father. So, so what true. I'm declaring is something that Josh has already brought out. And that is, it is truly recorded in the Bible that Elijah truly said it, but it, it's not a true statement according right. to doctrine right. and our study of God. Yes. Our theology says, no, God did not kill her son. Right. You may think so right. because you just don't know better yet, but they're right. going to find out. I mean, even David knew God better than Elijah. Yeah. And, and it, it actually says what killed him is sickness. He got sick. Exactly. I mean, it, it, yes. And we have no clue how he got sick. Right, exactly. And what happened. Yeah. Was he exposed to somebody else? Did he do something? You know, did yeah. he get a, a, a parasite that turned into something? Right. There I are, don't know. There are viruses and there are diseases and there are bad bacteria in the world that yes. can kill you. And it doesn't have, and it's not God. Yes. You know, it's, exactly. it's a part of living on earth. And so in verse 21, <clears throat> and he stretched himself out on the child three times. And he cried out to the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. So he did this three yeah. times. And I find it so interesting, the three. Yeah. It, 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 three is throughout the Bible, over mm -hmm. and over and over. We know that the number stands for the Trinity, yeah. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But again, the number three is really powerful. We don't have time like to go into numerology and, and, and get into yeah. the number three. But I just see it sticking out yeah. where he does, he does this three times, verse 22. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came back to him and he revived. Wow. So Elijah, how long has the boy been dead? Right. You know, yeah. and how, could how be long, several hours. How long was these three times? You know, how long was this going on? Oh, was, good point. You know, like we don't, he, it just tells us three times, but it doesn't say, you know, maybe he did it once and then that, not, you know, in the morning and then throughout the day he's praying and then he goes at night and does it again. And then the next day, yeah, we don't you, know. you know, we don't know. Yeah. And so that, that brought up a good point of, uh, you know, in raising the dead, you know, how long uh, should you pray or believe God to raise the dead? And this is not a teaching on how to raise the dead by any means, you know, but that was recently in, in society, that was a question that was brought up is how long should you pray for someone to be raised from the dead? And, and there were a lot of different uh, statements, but the, the only correct statement is there's no biblical precedent for how long, because if you think about it, when Jesus was resurrected and the saints of old resurrected with him and walked around Jerusalem at that time, remember? Yes. They were dead for quite a while. Uh, yes. So the, there is no real precedent um, in right. regards, and we don't know how long Elijah here is praying for this boy to it's be raised a, from those the dead. Are, that's a good point. You know, Very good point. Side yeah, note. Yeah. yeah, the three points could be three days. It doesn't really say. It doesn't. The indication seems to see think that as we read it, it's happening that day. Right. But what we do know is he hasn't come downstairs without the boy. Right. And then in verse 23, And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. Wow. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that you are a man of God. Now by this? I mean, he's been with you for a couple of years, and the oil hasn't run out, the flour hasn't run out, yeah. and you know it by this? I mean, this is a big deal. Right. But yeah. shouldn't we have already have been thinking you are a man of God? God is faithful. Yeah. So when we face tragedy in our yeah. life, we should not look at the tragedy and immediately jump to the place of saying, oh God, why'd you let this happen? Versus, oh God, you are almighty and you will deliver me even from this. Right. And that's the direction that we have to go. Yeah. He, said, uh, he said, now by this, I know that you are a man of God and that the 
word of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. Mm. And so I, I wonder how many Christians don't believe without continued miracles yeah. or signs and wonders. How many are, are, is our faith settled on signs and wonders more yeah. than the word of God? That's so true. So important that we believe that we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. Yeah. But we have to believe the word of God more than yeah. anything else. Yeah. And that the word of God dictates our life, yeah. not our circumstances. And we cannot say, God is blessing me because look at the miracle I just had. And yes. now I need another miracle right. and I need another sign. I need another wonder. You know, we, we can't be doing that. Yeah, I was, you know, on that note, I was just listening to uh, Andrew Walmack was sharing, you know, if, if you know who Andrew Walmack is, uh, he had an experience when he was younger of the love of God and how he had this just tremendous experience where he describes for like three months he didn't want to eat. He didn't want to do anything. He was just so full of the love of God, and it just radically transformed his life. And then he went to Vietnam, and he was sharing about this and how he does not wish that experience on anybody because the problem was when he had that experience, he became addicted to the feeling and that experience. So then when the feeling wasn't there, watch what happens next, right? You start doubting whether God really loves you. And so, you know, we come into a worship on a Sunday morning. Worship is lit. It's all going off. You know, people are dancing, having fun. You've got this feeling. You feel the presence of God. It's amazing. And then you go home on Monday and you might not think that God is as there or present as he was Sunday morning in the midst of worship. And that's what happens is when we chase feelings, we chase miracles, we chase signs, and we're not founded on God's word, we're going to be so up and down and fluctuate because, hey, our emotions fluctuate and we can't be led by our emotions. We really have to be led by the word of God. And I truly believe that God will make it and create an environment for us where we don't feel it. Like there's times where it's like, man, I have not felt the, you know, what does the presence of God feel like anyway? You know, like, I haven't felt the presence of God in like a month. Am I doing something wrong? It's like, no, the word hasn't changed. And because and God's trying to develop me, you know, he's yes. working on us that our faith isn't in a feeling, but our faith is in his word. Yes. Because so many times, yes. you know, you're praying for the sick or praying for somebody and say it's cancer or some big deal, you, you know, you're kind of checking, oh, do I feel God in this moment? As if it's like yeah. more difficult or you want to feel more holy or feel stronger or something as if it has anything to do with you. Yeah. Or do I have the tingle? Do I have, no, 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 no. It's when we're weak, we're strong. It's, it's when we're just depending on God and, and, and putting our faith in his word, yes. you know. Uh, years ago, I was, I'd only been a pastor at this time, maybe four, maybe five years. Mm -hmm. So um, I was still in my 20s. Mm -hmm. And I was preaching, and in the middle of the preaching, I just sensed the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel anything. I just sensed. I saw somebody sitting in the audience, and I stopped preaching. I walked over to this woman, mm -hmm. and I, I just knew. Uh, at that time, my habit, my routine, my MO yeah. was I would put my hand on a person's head mm -hmm. and pray for them because yeah. I knew I was supposed to pray for them. Yeah. I walked over and I didn't ask. I asked for her hand. I said, would you give me your hand? And she stuck her hand out and I'm holding her hand. And I said, I'm just supposed to pray for you. Mm -hmm. and, and I started to pray. Yeah. The next thing that came out of my mouth is, this growth that is in you, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus and be gone and be healed. And, and I, I walked away, didn't feel anything, no lightning, no shock, no nothing, no explosive, no. Just, the, just that was it. Yeah, went back, finished my sermon. Didn't know. I never, the first time the woman had ever been to our church. Mm. Um, what I found out later was a few weeks before she was in the hospital and they were going to do a procedure because she has cancer. Oh, wow. And they opened her up and found cancer everywhere. Oh, wow. Sewed her up and told her to go home. You've had a, about 30 days to live. Wow. She was an, uh, a more mature woman mm -hmm. age-wise. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't know that. And she wow. was completely healed of cancer, wow. even went back to the doctors. They couldn't find it. They kept monitoring her. Five years later, when they, because it has to be five years, yeah. she still has no cancer. Wow. And they, 
declare her cancer free that is five amazing. years later and God extended her life. I love that. You know, but it, well, I it, love it because they have the simplicity of the situation. Like it, there was no. Well, what I didn't know was she was wearing a wig. Oh, wow. Because of the chemotherapy right. she had been taking. Right. And if I had touched her head, uh, I could have moved the wig. Oh, God. And, and God cared that much yeah. that he didn't want to embarrass her, mm. but he wanted her to be prayed for. Wow. Amazing. That is so amazing. That God is so good. The Holy Spirit's in the details. God loves you, guys. Yes. God loves you. And there, so there, there, there's no, like I said, no bells, no whistles, yeah. no lightning come out of yeah. heaven, nothing. I had yeah. no clue who she was or what she was going through. But a lot of times if we just do, in the middle of a tragedy, God already has an answer. Nairobi's answer was get back to the land yeah. where you were. I right. didn't tell you to leave. Yes. And yes. this answer for the widow woman was get the prophet. He's already in your midst. Yes. I've already provided the answer for you. Wow. I knew this would, this would happen. Wow. So whatever it is that you are facing, whatever you are going through, God wants to help you. But you need not to be mad at God because you're yeah. going through a difficult time. Not to be jealous because someone else isn't going through a difficult time. Not to look at someone else's life and said, I wish I had their blessings, but realize you are a blessed child of God. Jesus died for you yeah. and he wants to bless you. So we're going to pray yeah. for their miracle. Yeah. Father, yeah. in the name of Jesus, I pray for the miracle that's needed right now in the person that's paying attention to that man, that woman, that child who's listening right now, whatever miracle they need, Father, in the name of Jesus, bring that miracle to them. Resurrect the dead the dead limbs, the dead parts of the body, the dead people in their life, the dead relationships, the dead finances. Resurrect to bring life in them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen, amen. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in this week. We really love you, appreciate you, and we look forward. We're going to continue in the life of Elijah next oh, Wednesday and, as well. And next Sunday, this coming Sunday, we're going back to two live services. That's right. 9, 30, and 11. Yes. And the 11 o'clock, our children's ministry is back, 11 o'clock only. So bring your kids to the 11 o'clock yeah. service. Get and, back in uh, church. Yeah, it's going to be great. Okay, we'll see you. God bless you.